If you're thinking about buying your first investment property but you've been concerned about the steps and where to start, then in today's short video, we're gonna talk about how to go from where you are right now to buying the perfect investment property with confidence. Let's get into it. The first step to buying your investment property is starting to save your deposit. Now, for me, I really like to automate this and just pay yourself first. So when you get paid from your job, you automatically transfer a portion of that money straight into a savings account so you can start building up those savings as your cash deposit. Now, for most people, it's going to take some time to build up that first deposit. So while you're saving up the deposit, it's really important to start educating yourself as a property investor. Now, there's so many YouTube videos and podcasts out there to help you learn a little bit more about property investing. There's some incredible books out there as well, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad from Robert Kiyosaki, and also Mastering the Australian Housing Market by John Linderman, two great places to start. Now you also need a mortgage broker or a bank manager. Now I always recommend going to have this conversation sooner rather than later, and they'll be able to tell you exactly how much you can borrow, which will really start to dictate that investment strategy that you'll implement. So the next step when buying your first investment property is investment strategy. Now I think one of the biggest mistakes we make or most first time investors make is not getting a clear strategy in place from day one. Strategy comes down to one of two ideas. The first idea is going for long long-term capital growth. So this is like what you've seen your parents and your grandparents do, where they either buy their own home or buy an investment property and then hold that property for the next 10, 15 or 20 years. Now an example of this would be if you were to buy a $500,000 property today and hold it for the next 15 years and that property grows by about 5% per annum, the 500K property you bought would now be worth a million bucks. Now this strategy really suits those who are looking to create financial peace in the future a secure future and to set themselves and their family up longer term. But I suppose the downside is it's a little bit slower and you can't eat that growth without selling the property down the line. Now the second idea is something that I love as well personally and I've done both of these ideas myself. The second idea is buying a property that produces great cash flow, slowly chipping away at that debt and then having that passive income stream coming in for life. The other idea if you're like myself and Simon where you want a little bit of everything is go for a property that's going to grow in value that gives you incredible cash flow and some strong tax benefits as well. But we'll talk about that in a future video. Now, depending on which strategy you've chosen to implement, you're gonna then start looking for the right investment property. And there is some do's and don'ts when it comes to property investing. Unfortunately, not all things are considered equal and there's some top performing assets and markets and some assets and markets that typically underperform. Now, rather than getting too emotional about this stuff, I just like to look at the history. I like to look at the data to help me make a better decision. And there's some great information coming out from the likes of CoreLogic RP Data, where they recently looked at 30 years worth of capital gains in Australia. What it indicated was that houses in metro markets have historically been the top performing assets followed by houses in major regional markets, then townhouses and units in major metro markets. Now, based on some of the work that we've been doing with our clients over the last nine years, there's a few other do's and don'ts that we really like to implement. Now, for us, we love to buy houses on nice large pieces of land. As big as you can buy is the rule of thumb and you wanna get as close to the city or as close to the water that you can possibly afford depending on the market that you're investing in. Now, always avoiding those red flags, try and avoid those busy, noisy locations within a suburb, try and avoid those low lying, potentially flood prone locations or areas out near the bush that could have fire hazards as well. And just trying to surround yourself with some good quality people. You wanna be in an area that's got some good schools, some good public transport options, some good amenities like hospitals, cafes, restaurants, universities, whatever it might be, just something that's gonna attract a lot of people to that particular location. Then we go into the process of negotiating, which is where the fun begins. Now, when negotiating for your first property, I think it's really important to be super honest with yourself, super honest with the agent, talk to the agent that's selling the property, get as much information as possible, like who's selling the property, why are they selling it, what are they hoping to achieve in terms of the price and what conditions in the contract would make it good for them, good for the seller that also work to protect you as well. Now, provided you've negotiated the deal well, you then move into the under contract phase, which generally lasts about 30 to 40 days on average. 
and is sometimes a very intense and overwhelming part of the process because there's so many different people working together at this point in time. As Ben just mentioned, you've got your solicitor, your mortgage broker, your property manager, insurance broker, town planner potentially, all trying to keep this deal together and all trying to get through to settlement and safely settle on that property. So once you've bought that right property, you've safely settled on it, now comes the fun part, which is where you get to set and forget it and continue to live your life. So for me personally, I like to have an accountant that can look after all the details. If it's a newer property or it's just been renovated, I like to get a bit of a tax depreciation report set up as well so that I can save a few dollars at tax time on my property. In terms of some of the little tips and tricks that Simon and I use. We have an insurance broker who makes sure insurance is always on place on the property just in case the worst case happens. Um, in terms of the bank accounts, I like to sort of nickname mine. So I've got home loan account and offset account. And then I like to put all of my extra savings, the extra rent that comes in from the property plus any tax benefits um, that I'm receiving over the course of the year in that offset account because every dollar that's in there is a dollar less that you pay on the home loan which can add up to big savings when you've got 50, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars in that account over the years. And then once you've let the dust settle a little bit and you get used to holding your first investment property, you come back and repeat this process a second time for your second investment property. Now, depending on where you're at and where you're looking to be, it could be years in between buying properties. It could just be months in between buying properties. It really depends on where you're at right now and how good your mortgage broker is. If you're thinking about buying an investment property in the next three to six months, then the team and I at Pumped On Property would love to offer you a one-on-one -on -one strategy session. To book the session, all you have to do is go to www.pumpedonproperty.com and click that free strategy session button. Now in the session, we'll talk about exactly where you are right now, we'd like to be longer term and educate you deeply on the Australian property market. You can then take that information and go and absolutely smash it on your own or potentially become one of the small number of clients that we work with each month. Either way, we look forward to continuing to help you build your property portfolio with confidence on your journey to financial freedom.